Hey everyone, hope you're well. I hope your isolation period is treating you as good as it possibly can be treating you. I hope you are staying home and abiding by the guidelines. Um, it seems like we're at the very beginning of what's going to be a long journey, but such is the adjustment. Uh, the purpose of this video is really to go through the injury report that came out today from Andrew Russell. Uh, he did a live Q&A on Twitter. And there was a bit of news, a bit of relevant news for us to get through there. So without further ado, let's do this. So question was about Matthew Cruiser, And the answer was he's had a screw put in the fifth metatarsal. We'll reassess the healing at around six weeks post-surgery. Gives us a strong indication of how quickly we can get him back to weight-bearing running. He's had a similar injury on the other foot, which is he recovered fully from. Obviously a tough one, um, you know, cruiser has been subject to many injuries over the, the course of his career and you know, I still remember the first few years of his career. He played, I believe he played every game for the first two seasons. And then in season number three, he did his ACL against Frio at the old Etihad Stadium. So, yeah, hopefully we can get him right. I guess this break is going to benefit someone like him in that he won't miss too many regular season games. But we'll just have to see how that goes. Next question was about how our longer term injured players and if they're more driven and excited by the by the potential of still playing considering the season has been pushed out. Jack Russell said, it's an interesting question, but it's spot on. There's a lot of uncertainty, but you could see a sense of belief by some and a sense of excitement by others when they realize they may not miss much of the season at all. There was also excitement from the main group. Uh, it's a pretty straight bat answer question there. I, I do think there would be a, a, quite a bit of excitement for a guy like a Charlie Kerno maybe even a guy like a Brody Kemp, who now all of a sudden has a, a round one debut um, that opens up for him, uh, or a round two debut, I should say, that opens up for him, um, depending on when the season goes ahead. I know that the, the guidelines at the moment say that May 31st is what we're preparing for, but I don't know, just, just can't see it being so soon. You know, just having a look at the rest of the world and, you know, the NBA and all the other leagues around the world and how... You know, they were ahead of us in locking down. So I, I just don't know. But yeah, look, it, like I said before, it, it's a good situation for our players who are injured or even our first year players like a Sam Philp who might want to have an extra preseason now to put on some more size and add some more running power to his frame. And so, yeah, it's an interesting one. Next one. What does the running program look like for the average player while we are on hiatus? So everyone has an individualized program that covers all the needs. Once every nine days, they're going, they're doing a game simulation type session. Now, I don't know how that happens, but anyway, within that, they're doing pre-planned sprints, agility movements, kicking drills, and more. The only thing they don't get is man-on-man -man contact. Now, I, I think, I imagine, and I would hope that they're, you know, linking up with another player and doing these sessions. I, I can't even imagine how hard that would be to do on your own. Uh, it would take some serious self-motivation to do that and uh yeah I, I can't even imagine it but again they are elite athletes they're paid well and you know they, they, they do this for a living so yep next question how has the team changed since you first took over carlton's high performance so the main thing 18 months ago was there were so many new players as teammates they didn't know each other teams that play well understand each other and have great relationships on and off the field the main thing is they've built a strong connection quickly Physically, we're certainly leaner with a lot less body fat. Guys like Paddy Dow, David Cunningham, who are explosive, have improved their repeat ability having been in the system longer. AFL players need three to five years in the system to get to their best level. Now, this is interesting because he is obviously someone that's come from a very successful club in Hawthorne. He was there for quite some time, and I sort of sensed some of the comments that he was come that were coming through related to his time at Hawthorne. I do have questions over a guy like a Paddy Dow, for example, who did add running power, and it was noted that he had lost a kilo or two kilos in the off season to add some running power and lean up. And you know, it was only one game, and even Cunners as well. It was only one game, but we didn't really see them physically impose themselves on the contest. Now that might be by design. That might be due to the the game style that we want to play. We want to have more of a a spread of runners, but um, you know we're not going to really know if it's going to work for a while now. So, yeah, they, they were interesting comments. Um, you know, obviously the other one about needing three to five years in the system, and that's coming straight from the top. You know, Andrew Russell's been in the game long enough to know exactly, um, you know, how long a player needs. And yeah, we look at a guy like Sam Walsh who had a great first year, and we make comparisons to him and Lockie O'Brien and Paddy Dow. 
and uh, then you hear it from Jack Russell here. So he probably goes to show that we need to be a little bit more patient with these guys. So the next question, how do we intend on assist? How do we intend on assisting? I'm assuming that is Cruiser, McKay and Kerno whilst they're away from the club in rehab. So both Dan James, who is our rehab physio, and myself are in daily contact with those guys. We're not allowed to train them at the club, but we can do rehab sessions at a medical clinic. That's interesting. We can still train the players in line with the guidelines, just like anyone in the public can exercise with one other person. We feel like we've got a good handle on things and managing our rehab guys well, given the circumstances. And, and look, they're important, all three of them. Um, particularly the, the, the two young forwards, because that's the future of the club. Cruiser is also a big part of what we do, but you just feel, I just feel like you know Harry and, and Charlie are just, it's so important to get them on the park because we need to get this best 22 together ASAP and get games into it. So, yep. Are you worried about Charlie Kerno's injury? Are you confident he can come back this season and perform to his potential? This is an interesting question. Uh, and Russell says that we understand it's a significant injury and we understand the injury. That's important because previously the message was all about we didn't know what the injury was. We didn't know how to treat it and, and whatnot. Anyway, we feel confident that he's going to get back and play high-level footy. The one thing we don't know for certain is when that's going to be. To get a good result, we need to take time and take time frames out of the equation to get a good long-term outcome. He's having another update tomorrow, which will determine his progression. What we know about Charlie is that he's an extremely hard worker. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, I think they probably made a bit of a mistake by trying to put a timeline on him early. And they did also say that it, it depended on how he reacted because I, I remember them saying that he was getting the wires taken out of the kneecap or the patella tendon. I'm not exactly sure on that, but I remember there were wires coming out and then it was all about how he reacted to that or how his knee reacted to that. So yeah, it seems like Charlie is some time away because usually when they're two to three or three to four weeks away, they'll just say it. So it seems like he's still got a, a challenge ahead of him. So the next question. Hi, Andrew. I was wondering how Caleb Marchbank and Eddie Betts injuries are progressing. So Eddie did a running session this morning. If it was in season, he'd be back training skills within one to two weeks. We expect him to do a really good conditioning block and be ready to play when we're back. That's fantastic news for Eddie because he's had a great preseason. And Marchie's knee is tracking well. We expect him to train shortly and certainly be back playing when we resume. That's also good news. He just can't catch a break, that guy. Every year, something happens. Next question. What does lockdown mean for an elite athlete? How do they ensure they remain at peak fitness for a competition which may resume in two months' time? So they have the mindset of an elite athlete, which in their very nature are optimistic individuals. Until we know otherwise, we're preparing for the 31st of May. We've got a structured program. The biggest challenge won't be training. It'll be staying motivated to eat and sleep well. That's very interesting. These players love being around each other and they love getting energy from each other. They're finding ways to stay connected because when we do resume, it'll come very quickly and we're going to have to get into football shape very quickly. Yeah, look, it's uh, those are very interesting comments. Um, you know, the fact that we've done such a hard preseason and and whatnot, and now it's all about maintenance. It just it's just so unprecedented. I don't know how we're going to be able to make it um, into a positive, but the reality is we are going to make it into a positive, no matter what happens. And and just as he said there, that's the, that's part of being an elite athlete. It's it's all about remaining optimistic. And you know, Mick Malthouse in his book, and if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Um, it's called The Ox is Slow, But the Earth is Patient. And he talks about if you remove hope from a player or from anyone really, then there's nothing left. You know, you can't just give people doomsday scenarios because in this situation, there's no motivation to keep going and, and eating well and sleeping well. So yeah, very, very fascinating comments there. Next question. Do you think the time off will be a detriment to the players or will give them more time to become fitter and more match ready? I don't think it'll be a detriment, but I don't think they'll be fitter given we trained for five months. For the majority of our players, it's about maintaining the fitness of the five months. The advantage is for those who have had an interrupted preparation due to injury. And that for us is very much key individuals, even Sam Doherty to an extent. Yep, he's played a game, he's played, done a preseason, he's played in the Marsh series, but just extra strength on those knees is, is probably a good thing for him as well. Next question, how is Brody Kemp doing? and he's six and a half months post ACL. His attitude to his rehab has been absolutely first class. He's now got more 
muscle bulk on his injured leg than his uninjured leg, which is rare. That is very rare because obviously, um, you know, after surgery, you know, my brother's had three reconstructions and, you know, he, he speaks about it all the time. After surgery, it takes a while to get that balance there. So the fact that he's overcompensating now on the injured leg is, is, is interesting. He's giving high level running and change of direction and undertaking kicking drills. He hasn't been included in group training. That's to be expected. Which of our young players are you most excited to see bloom? I've been really impressed with all of our drafted players this year. Sam Philp has been extremely impressive in understanding what's required to be a high-level AFL player. Everyone talks about him. Everyone has had a comment to make about him, and it's good to see. Tom DeConning has shown great maturity with his preparation this year. It's a good sign. Jack Martin's been outstanding with how driven he is to be a great Carlton player. Finbar O'Dwyer and Matt Owies are guys who are giving themselves every opportunity to play footy. I like the fact that I'm hearing their names and you know they're popping up and coming to mind. Is it just a, a play on giving us some hope with them? I don't know, but the fact is he's mentioned them and, and that's a good thing. Next question, why are we so injury prone? Happens every year, it needs to be handled better. Well, what do you want them to do, mate? Anyway, if we had played football this week, seven would have been, wouldn't have been available. Two of those... We've had some sort of control over Eddie Betts with his calf and Harry Mackay with his groin. We feel very comfortable with our injury prevention and our high perf- and our performance program right now. What is that question? It needs to be handled better. What do you want them to do, mate? Anyway, um, you know, we, we, it's just it's it's part of the game. It's un you know it's it's luck is a big part of the game. Getting the right players healthy at the right time is also very important. So, you know, there are injury prevention things that can happen there. But you look at Cruiser, freak accident. You look at Zach Fisher, someone landed on his ankle, freak accident. Nick Newman went in for a tackle, dislocated elbow, freak accident. Like, it's very hard to, it's very easy for us who are not playing in this league to say, you know, handle it better, stop injuries from happening. So that's my take on it. Um, you know, it, it was it was good to hear from him. It was good to hear from the club. And these are going to be interesting times. And I just, you know, really, us as fans, we've just got to, sit tight and hope that the boys are doing the right things and, and keeping themselves in the right mindset and, and physical um, condition that they need to. So that way, when we are ready to play footy again, that they're ready. And who knows, this could be, this is so unprecedented that this could be the making of a, a real upset season. You know, could the Blues win the flag this year after the coronavirus stops the league? Who knows? Anyway, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Did you like or not like anything that Russell said? Let's have a chat about it. Go the Blues.